So I'm still uh, sick and uh, uh, a bit sleepy today. So I don't know that my brain is fully functional. That being said, I think we can accomplish something, uh, maybe not too much. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of obvious things that, that, that can be done at this point. One is to hook up more of the functionality of the, uh, of the job queue, such as checking if a, if a job is done, only looking at the, uh, at the, uh, <laughs> only looking at the, um, the uncompleted jobs and so on and so forth. Another is, uh, just tying in the job, uh, the job queue stuff with the, um, with starting to write to the article database. So, you know, once the job is finished, um, the, the corresponding, uh, article for that job needs to be written to the database. I'm not really sure, um, how that, <laughs> I think I had a plan for how that went. I don't remember right now off the top of my head, what it is. I guess I can look up, um, what I had written before. And the, maybe the third thing that, that I can do is start adding, um, start adding some, uh, error types for error handling. And I think that maybe, um, given the, the limited state of my, of my brain currently, and given that I think I need the error handling for, uh, for doing more job queue stuff, I might, I might just do that. So let me, um, I did one thing, which was, I made it so that when we write jobs, I was writing a, a fake URL that was not a properly formed URL um, to the database. And so I just cleaned out all of those database entries and made it so that uh, all of the, all of the jobs in the, the job queue database are, are proper jobs. And now the, the tests pass, which is good. Do I not have a compilation window? Yeah, I must have closed it. So I guess let's just make sure that we compile th compile stuff. Um, I guess maybe before I get the error handling stuff, let me take a quick look at the uh, at anything to see if I wrote down anything about how I how I was planning this thing to go. So for insert article, no, wait, that's not what I want. I want, um, so I guess the, the article table has an ID. Does it reference the job ID? I don't think it does. And then the job. The job has a job ID. Uh, it keeps track of its failures. Something about retrying, like when to retry after, and a, a status, whether it's pending, completed, or failed. Um, and so, and so, and so. So I guess the way that it's going to work is when you request an article, it will, I think it should add it to the database and just update the, um, and just update the article when it's, when the job is done. And I think to make that happen, uh, we need the, the job to point the, the article table to, to have some reference to the job. Is that right? Maybe I excluded it because it seemed like that wasn't, um, maybe I didn't want to have like these references to jobs around so long. So I'm not sure. Well, I guess, uh, so the, the article itself, we can't really populate any of this until we have, until we fetch the, until we have fetched the, uh, 
until the test job is completed, right? So we can't like parse the title or the author or anything or know how long it, it takes to read. Let's rename some of these things. Okay, so I guess task two is fine. So I guess I, there's a couple of things I could do. I could just view the task queue as a record of the intent of the user to add an article. Um, I don't think that's great because the this job uh, may fetch in the back, you know, the same article might be used by multiple users. And, and currently the job queue doesn't know anything about um, the user or whether they want to add the article. So maybe I want to record another table of the intent to add an article that, uh, that references the, the, uh, the job queue thingy. And once the job is done, the article is added. I'm not sure. Let's see if we can, um, let's ask the AI. Well, I have an app. I have a bookmarking app that download that fetches URLs. So that users can add them to their reading list. Uh, what do you think is a good design for recording user intent to um, add an article to the database? Here are some options. I wonder how good this is. Hello. Okay, so let's try this. I'm building an app that, yeah, okay. Oh, I wasn't sure if you're still listening. All right, I'm building an app that allows users to bookmark URLs, period. It's going to fetch these, uh, web pages in the background period which of the following do you think is a good design for recording user intent uh, specifically the intent that that they want to add an article to their reading list period colon new line <laughs> all right that's not great but I guess not terrible. Maybe I'll figure out how to, how to do that. Um, so one, oops. So one, record the intent in the article database, uh, such as by creating in the article table. So just by creating a uh, dummy entry that points to the job, uh, the task in the task view, and which gets updated with real values once the task is com completed. Two, record the intent, uh, create the job in the task queue as the intent to add the article. Um, this may require expanding the task queue to include information about which user requested the article. Three, create a, a third table that uh, models, models user intent and maps the article 
URL to the job ID, but also uh, and uh, that well that that um, which uh, maps the user to the job and the uh, article URL to the together I guess that that uh, not maps how about that uh, record mm, that captures them I guess um, and when the job is finished this uh, the entries in this table are used to populate the article table. I'll say the user's uh, reading list table. All right, and let me just like reread this, this updated. Um, speech to texted. Yeah, so there's anything just added to the task queue, which I, which I think is the one that I prefer anyway. Let's ask ChatGPT. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So I would I would need to update the task queue to have um, to have some sense of user. I think that maybe now that I'm thinking about this again, I think I may have mentioned that earlier. Uh, but then I need to I need to know what type of <laughs> what type the user ID is going to be. Um, I think that, what if I just assume it's an int64? Uh, so, let's see, what types do the following systems use, um, let's say internally for user IDs? So Keycloak, LDAP, and uh, free IPA, let's say. So Keycloak uses UUIDs. I'd actually, I guess I didn't realize that LDOP, the, um, the DNs are the, the like ultimate identifier. Is that right? That's, that's pretty unfortunate. Um, it uses LDAP, is it so, okay. Do I want it? Um, I'll say, tell me about the the trade offs between using uh, UUIDs versus like int sixty fours for identifying users. I'm not sure if there's a really a, a security gain. Maybe there is. I'll ask Gemini the same thing. So use N64 if I have a single centralized database and storage space is a major concern. 
Readability is also a factor. UUIDs if they have a distributed system or plan to merge data. Um, let's see if, what the internet says. What are UIDs? So this is asking about auto increment. My tab just crashed. What is this? I'm probably exposing my, you're probably exposing your user ID anyway. What just went on? And so there's one answer and it's a, a vote of zero. Um, I guess I can do, I can do UUIDs. Use integers. This is the simplest and most efficient way. Don't use hashes or UUIDs or var cards in place of int. Don't use natural key when you have foreign keys to it. So UUIDs are valuable when you want multiple independent computers created for work, but they select as the primary keys. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want them to be a primary key, but that's a that's a separate issue. I guess UUIDs are fine. Uh, I think I can do a create or a modify table, right? Let's think about that. And I'll just do um, I guess before all this use this uh, metadata stuff. I'll say user. Wait, is user a keyword in SQL? SQL keywords. I guess it is because it, uh, I don't know. I'll say user ID. I don't know if there's a UU ID type. Uh, do I want it to be nullable? I guess so. For now, since I don't, <laughs> since I don't have any user IDs. Um, all right. So that's that'll be like enough to just remind me that. Eventually, I'm going to need a user ID pair. So that 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 that'll be fine. Um, okay. So I guess the way that'll work is that um, in order to insert the article into the database, which was like the one of the three things I was thinking I could, I could work on today, I um, I will need to have um, the I'll need to expand what the what the job. Uh, with what's going on with the task queue, which is the first thing that I was thinking. But I think to expand what's going on with the task queue, I want to have proper error types. And by proper, I just mean kind of any reasonable error types. And I think that uh, what I want to do is just find Google's um, uh, error code proto and see if I can just import them. which I think I should be able to. Um, we have releases here. So 
let's see if there's like Google APIs. Like Basil config. I think there should just be some releases here. One, one release. I guess I'll just have to I guess I'll just have to have it as a git repo. I think it was like git archive. Get repository. Move this out for a second. Twenty sixteen. Now, I guess it doesn't really matter what commit we have. Because I don't think these really change much. And what do we want to call them? I guess Google APIs. And then I should be able to build like code.proto. This is what it should be called, I think. Try Basil build. Oh, that's that. Grab this com thing. And then like slash Google slash RPC colon. Probably just code dot proto, right? Code underscore proto. So it didn't find um, this thing. Huh. Oh, you know what? Did I um I think I I, I think I copied the wrong thing for the uh, git URL. It should be this. But I don't know why it didn't fail. 
I mean, it did fail, but I don't know why it didn't have the louder error message. Couldn't find package in target. I, I guess I don't need that. Um, Why are there no matches to this error message? I'm obviously doing something horribly wrong. What if I just give this a different name, like uh, XXX? I think I'm uh, forgetting something really fundamental. Oh, Basil uh, workspace example. It doesn't say anything about workspace files. Maybe my ba maybe my Basil version is just way too old for, for some reason. I should be able to fetch other stuff, right? So I can fetch stuff like that. Oh, okay, so was I just not having the uh, thing at the end of the line? Okay. That uh, that is progress, and we need this Gapic generator C sharp. I don't really want that, but I guess I might need it.
Let's see if I can just uh, do this. Python 3 dev. What? Couldn't find Python in. What if I try to patch code proto? Oh wait, what is this? So I can fetch that. Can I build it? Okay, just out of curiosity. Okay, so it seems like I don't need this um, entry because they must already be pulling in um, this uh, proto stuff anyway. Okay, so now I can just, so I, th that just would have already worked. If I, <laughs> I hadn't somehow messed it up. Um, so now I should be able to do something like um, in my build file here. Is this where I want to do it? Maybe I, maybe I can do it down here. Haskell Proto Library. And the names will be, um, is it code or codes? Code, Haskell Proto. And then the, the depths will be this googly thing. that work oh no I need this at sign it will try at least Yeah, okay, that seems to work. So can I consume these protos in uh, in where? Where do we want to try that? I guess in wget. So I guess I, I can do something like import proto dot now I don't know what the uh, what the module will be Maybe proto like their protos uh, code as PC. Yeah, I think that's not the um, 
I think that's not the uh, the name <laughs> of this of this file. Uh, but let's see if we can find it, figure out what it should be. I guess um, one thing we can do is just head into the Basil out directory and see if we can find um, something like code.hs. We can. And proto, okay, so it does take the, um, it does take the, the module name from the, I guess from the, the from what, I don't know. Is this the, let's check if this is the proto, um, proto package thing. Cause it looked like this, uh, this rule wasn't, what, what is going on here? It looked like this rule, <laughs> this rule wasn't taking, um, the, the other rule wasn't taking the name, the Haskell module name from the proto package name. So I, I don't think that's what's going on, but maybe it is. Uh, so job proto, the package name is le uh, lfct lecter dot v0. And that doesn't appear in the import statement for the module. So I think that um, where this, uh, module name is really coming from is not the google.rpc package perhaps but maybe the directory that the original proto is in but i'm not positive so uh where is it import statement somewhere here Okay, so that, that imports at least. And now we should be able to have some sort of error type such as failed precondition, no, internal, unavailable, data loss. Unauthenticated, resource exhausted, not found. Well, none of those seems um, obvious, but Let's just see if we can read this this uh, proto at all. Uh, so I have some proto reading, working proto reading code in this integration test. So I would have to create a message, right? Let's try the original SQL integration test. Um, I think, I guess actually, um, this code really just has the enum. So maybe what I want is, this, is the status as well. And now I'm seeing that the, the status code is just an in 32. So maybe that's why, well, I might have to do like a little bit of, of thinking to figure out uh, how to um, take this code, which is a, a proto enum. I don't know how it's going to materialize in Haskell. That, that I, th I think partially depends on the, on the implementation of the proto lens library. But at any rate, I want to be able to take, to create like a message where I take a, um, the, the proto from this enum and the, and, and combine it with this status proto, which is expecting an int. And that I do that in a Haskell -y enough way that I don't go to Haskell jail. Um, 
so let's add the, the status thing here. And then add the corresponding dependency here. Can I import them both as the same thing? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, and then we'll say def message pc dot code is uh, one. And let's see if that compiles. Okay, so it doesn't like code. But why not? Let's see what the uh, generated code looks like. Is it status prime code? So I, I, oh, first of all, let's, let's call this um, What does it export? Let's ask the AI. Okay, so given a proto, it looks like this. Um, how would I read the generated, uh, so, um, I am generating, say, some, say, it's, uh, some Haskell code using, uh, ProtoLens. How would I read the, how would I, I guess, create a status, uh, Proto in Haskell? And let's just simplify it because it doesn't get too distracted by the uh, the details proto. Uh, 
I don't think this is Fritterlin. I don't think you know what you're talking about, dude. Okay, so let's see if ChatGPT knows. So I'll just tell it to generate a simple example. You don't, I don't think this, <laughs> I don't think this is right at all. Um, I'm not asking. Okay, so def message hash ID. So maybe I need to try the hash thing. We get a parse error. Let's see, let's just try the documentation again. Proto lens tutorial. So, okay. So we have def message and maybe uh, prime bar. Is there, is this create method generated? Let's see. So this is one out of generation. What I don't understand is why there's not just like a standard like intro for things that are uh, so that that tutorial covers like one of and uh, and um, like me, uh, name collisions, but it would, it would be nice to have maybe more something like this. Okay. Oh, is this the same thing? That's overloaded labels. Uh, maybe it's in the readme. Okay. So and p dot name. So we're importing. Oh, we need uh, we need to import fields. Is that my problem? I think I need to import fields.
I need code fields and I need status fields. And then this is not, that's not, whoop, that's not going to work. Let's call these all P. This should be closer. Not in scope, def message. I think we're closer. Variable not in scope. Which variable? Oh, this uh, twiddly. Twiddle operator is not in scope. Well, why not? I guess I need lens micro as well. I'm finding the um, the import situation a little bit on the confusing side, but I don't think that's uh, I think that's just because I'm not so used to the language. But it's kind of strange that I have to import like four different things to to read a proto. For example, I feel we are getting closer. Oh, micro lens is duplicated. That's because I've added it to the wrong thing. Do I need, is the and, the and symbol is separate? Yeah, it is separate. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Seems to just be a typo. Okay, so that <laughs> at least it compiles. At least it compiles. Uh, what are the chances that I can assign? So, so we can create a, a status. Can we create a code? Um, and we'll say code is equal to. Now I know that I have a working um, example doesn't have name over name collision like my other working example did so um i guess a, a code isn't really like a thing that i create right so a code is just one of these enums I don't, yeah. Uh, let's see. I 
I don't think that's how things work, but let's try it. No module, p.code is imported. Okay, well, that's all right. So I think I'm gonna stop here um, and then hopefully tomorrow I'll feel a little bit better. I'll be able to make a little bit more uh, progress.